Major funding for these broadcasts is made possible by grants from New York Community Bank, Capital One Bank, Perfect Building Maintenance, Chase Commercial Term Lending, M&T Bank, Genova Burns. Additional support is provided by AKA Hotels, Corman Communities, Aerial Property Advisors, AVR Realty Company, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Bank Laumi USA, Briarwood Organization, CBRE, Citizens Bank, Collins Building Services, Connect One Bank, CPEX Real Estate Services, Cushman and Wakefield, DDG, Dime Savings Bank of Williamsburg, Douglaston Development, Levine Builders, Fisher Brothers, First Nationwide Title Agency, Flushing Bank, Friedman, Handler Real Estate Organization, HAP Investments, Investors Bank, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Center at Syracuse University, Kilroy Architectural Windows, New York's Window Company, Madison Realty Capital, Matone Group, Mercantile Commerce Bank, Meridian Capital Group, New Banks, Optimum Window Manufacturing Corp., People's United Bank, Rosewood Realty Group, SJP Properties, Sterling National Bank, Stonehenge Partners, TD Bank, Terra CRG, The Continuum Company, The Moynian Group, and These Friends. Apparel, garments. There was once a place, you know, a long time ago, that we called the apparel and the Shmata district. Today, it's Tammy, it's technology, it's a business, it's media, it's a different world. Where am I talking about? I'm talking about an area which is basically from, let's say, 34th Street to 42nd Street, an area that we can call Times Square South. Is that good? We can call Times Square South. Times Square <laughs> South. <laughs> so today I've assembled this group of industrious leaders to provide their insight, owners, brokers, lawyers, advisors, on what's happening in that neighborhood. My guests today include the vice chairman at CBRE, Peter Turchin, um, Michael Reed, who's a partner at uh, Herald Square Properties, uh, Mark Portner, who is a managing director for acquisitions at Shorenstein Properties. And last but not least, you have to bring in <laughs> their counsel to this group. <laughs> That's right. Chris Smith, who is the uh, partner in charge of all real estate for a small little firm called Sherman & Sterling. So you became the statistician, you've, you mentioned, okay? You took over for the powers. So what's really happening? This was an area, you know, a couple of years ago, you could go to this neighborhood on 7th Avenue, you know, or 8th Avenue, the side street, you know, you could find the property probably in the 20s or 30s going back. What's the rents today? Well, what happened was this, this little thing we called Midtown South explosion, <laughs> uh, where we've seen the rents in Midtown South have, you know, doubled some case two and a half times depending on the district. And what that has done is led to overflow and the tenants have needed more space. So while this so district- So wait, can't they go to 6th Avenue? Used to can't, be, the, can't they go to Avenue the Americas? <laughs> you know, that, that, that's corporate world. They don't go to corporate world. They want creative world. They want the collaboration world. So these tenants are looking for places to go. And, and what do they want? They want to collaborate. They want to be in unique buildings. They want to be by transportation. They want to be by parks. They want amenities and they need a place to go. So they should go to his property or his property, right? And, <laughs> and that's where they've been, they've been moving north. See, but he was, a, he was a pioneer. Michael was a pioneer. You know, he and Starwood went to 1372. They bought a couple of other properties in the neighborhood. He has a, a, a premier property on Third Avenue, the Lipstick Building. Uh, no, he, sorry, 850 is a fantastic nice building. Right? <laughs> 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 okay, I know. Okay, already yeah. Yeah. you know, you got to take care of everybody. Right? <laughs> How course. do you decide yeah. to yeah. originally go to <laughs> what he's calling Midtown South or Times <laughs> Square South? How, how do you guys decide? Well, to go? You know, an interesting thing is, is happening in, in New York City in general. 
uh, which is that you used to have these major gaps between markets. So there was there was actually Midtown, there was a little bit of Midtown South, and then you went a long way before you hit an office market and you got downtown. And what's happened now is that that the whole island is is really getting integrated, uh, including, frankly, Brooklyn. So tenants are looking over a much vaster area than they used to because it's all kind of connected. Uh, the big gaps between, if I, I work in Midtown, I have to go all the way down to downtown. That used to be a big statement. It's not the statement it used to be. Um, when we looked at the West 30s buildings, which we bought um, in, in, in 2014 and, and very profitably sold in, in 2015, uh, we liked it because it was right in the middle of the, the, the donut in, in that sense that the one property was on 36th Street uh, and one was on 39th Street, one, one right off 7th, one right off 8th. And what we saw was what you were talking about, that, that, that Chelsea and the, and the Midtown South Market was pushing up. 42nd Street was getting developed and pushing down. Broadway uh, was also, you know, which we saw in 1372 Broadway, which we also bought and sold with Starwood, w was pushing. And then, and then Hudson Yards, best of all, was coming from the West. And so here are these two properties sitting right in the middle of all of this. So we loved it because you had market forces generating demand from four directions. Probably the strongest direction was South, like you said. And we thought it's got to happen here. Um, when we got to the buildings, the, the rents in the buildings were $25. Um, when we left the buildings, we were pushing 50, and that was in 16 months. Um, and and the, the funny thing about an entrepreneur, and you know this as well, is when you go into what we would call an edge neighborhood, but this was great because it had four edges, right? It had four sure. sides yeah. to it. Every investor wants to do and you know the, the the neighborhood the next neighborhood except when you take them to the next neighborhood. Right, sure. And then they, then they say, "Give me the comps," and then we go to you and we say, "Give me the comps." And, and then he would make up the, right. then he'd make up these numbers yeah. out of the air. Yeah. Comps, I have no idea. So here, yeah. you know, you, you sit in, in, in a position both as an advisor to companies like him, advisor to tenants. How do you look at? The, the metamorphosis of what I, we would once call the garment center or the apparel area? Um, I, for the tenants, I think it's opportunity, but I mean, this gentleman will speak to that. Yeah, he, he, he <laughs> but, but it's, it's opportunity. It's, it's, um, and I, tenants, you know, need the amenities, they need space, and representing them in this sort of situation. It doesn't really change, except it moves a little quicker. It's a little less formalistic, but they're going right you where see, they need to go. You see, but at one time, going back since I'll, I'll age myself, I remember I was a kid and I was an accountant, I worked in public accounting, and I got a job with this firm called Clarence Rainus. Mm. And Rainus was at 577th Avenue. And if you went down there, Rain, there, there were buildings, 570 right near 1407. Sure, right, right. There were these mecca buildings that Everybody in the apparel industry, you know, the Jonathan Logans, okay, the Ralph Lauren, okay, the accounting firms, the Mahoney Cones, mm -hmm. okay, you, you know, this was the neighborhood that they would be in it. And then they said, oh, this is a neighborhood because I can have a low cost alternative because the rents went down so much. But the neighborhood has such great bones, as yes. they would say. Yes. The, the bones over there. I mean, you know, you take a company like Shorenstein, who's in 11 different markets, I think, around the country, and, you know, you were here, you've been in, in, in the New York City market, but for you to go to 1407, that was a little change, even though Michael showed you the numbers, he okay? Did, he showed us the way. Uh, you yeah. know, if he could sell it to you, he'd sell it to <laughs> you. Right now, right? <laughs> he told me that right. he's, he really wants Shorenstein to go to 125th Street and park out. <laughs> right on the train. Not because there it's yet. Not it's not the there next yet. neighborhood. That's right. the next right. neighborhood. No, but if you think about it, we did stare at Lehigh, right? When we did stare at Lehigh, that was a very edgy location. And mm -hmm. we talked about this before. When you take somebody over there, you take your investors there, they'd say, where are we? How do we get back? And how do we get back quickly? And, it, and You get was, a passport. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was the edge of the earth at the time when we did that deal. But um, to me, that had a lot of similarities with 1407. You had some fashion in there. You had some old manufacturing. So instead of garment, you had manufacturing tenants. Um, and then you started to have the Tammy-type tenants come to stare at Lehigh. So when we look at 1407, we see um, you know, all the characteristics that Michael said. 
We love the transportation around there. And then we look at the bones of the building and we say we've got really big base floors that are 45, 50,000 square feet and we've got 14,000 square foot uh, tower floor plates. And we have a lot of flexibility there. You know, you have, you have a lot of little tenants. It gives you a lot of room to create big blocks of space. So he, here's the yeah. question for you, you know, for everyone over here. You have these tenants who've been at 1407, 1411, 577 mm -hmm. Avenue, you know, 463 7th Avenue, Kaufman's properties, all these. So where do these companies who really are not that affluent today, where do they go? And where can they afford to go? Because the city of New York, to, for the city to grow, which it's growing and bringing more people, you have to have space for everyone. I think Michael brought it up a little bit, this Brooklyn, but Brooklyn is becoming a little expensive, expensive yeah. too. Right. Expensive. You know, so where, where are they going? You, you where, know, so the tenants who are moving out of 1407 that he's leasing to someone you know, else? I think there's, there's two. There's some that are going to be able to go from the kind of the avenue buildings to the mid-block right. buildings. Mm -hmm. So I think you'll see some of those move into the mm -hmm. smaller floor play, you know, and stay in the area. I think for those who can't, they're either going to be looking further west or Long Island City. If anyone's been there, there is a lot of space going on in Long Island City. There's a lot of space going on in Brooklyn. Long Island City tends to be not so, as you hip. See, I think, but I, I think Long Island City has great opportunities because of the, of the, you see, it's the same way of, of what we call Midtown South Garment Center, Tammy, Times Square area. You have the trains. Long Island City has seven trains. It does. It, it's, yeah. it's a great opportunity. While Brooklyn, industry city's fine because there's trains nearby, but the Brooklyn Navy Yard, they don't have. So they're going to have to come out with shuttles. And in, in, in the same manner that people forget that when Larry Silverstein built on 42nd and 12th, he had to have shuttles to bring people. Yep. And Doug Durst on 57th Street has shuttles to bring people. That's right. You, you know, so th there's a question. How do you, I mean, uh, I don't know when the Sherman Sterling lease is coming up, but there are a lot of, no, no. <laughs> Touchy side. There does. I know. <laughs> I have a negotiation <laughs> right here. all know it. That's right. <laughs> right on television, a live <laughs> negotiation. Billy, too. You're yeah, yeah I know. I can see that. You guys hate them to say that, right? Beat them up. Yeah, no, but here, up. here's a, a point. I mean, you're at 599, a.k.a. the City Corp building. I still don't call it 599. Like, I call it the City Corp building. It's <laughs> like... You, we still call people at <laughs> the Times Square, uh, Pan Am building, or MetLife. Mm -hmm. People remember these things. When you're looking for space, and, you know, at one time, City Corp is it's a fantastic building, good ownership. It's not anybody sitting over here, but, he, you know, he knows the owners. You know, Mort's a good guy, right. and Boston does mm -hmm. a great job. You know, when you're looking... And you're looking for your employees, and you're looking for the change. And when you started in the practice of law, you know, the partner's office was 300 feet. Mm -hmm. Today, the partner's office is X, you know, and there, were, there are no more legal, law libraries, you know, and right. there's more efficiency at right. scale. You know, and what, what Michael did on some of the buildings that they've owned over the years, you know, not, not at the um, Lipstick building, is today, they don't, people don't have walls. I mean, it's nice to have the open ceiling, mm -hmm. you know, the painted, and, you know, forget t uh, carpet. You know, the people like the cement floors, the painted cement, There's no right? carpet, there's no more ceiling tile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how does a firm, you know, and, and this is a double edge, you know, because you're an advisor to owners, you're an advisor to clients, and then you have to look at it yourself. You know, well, when we look at it for ourselves, we're moving in the same direction that's been described. Smaller offices, or if you have offices at all, or, you know, group meeting spaces, uh, all the sort of amenities that everyone seems to be talking about is something that's high on our list, obviously, right? So we're, we're probably dinosaurs in this regard. We're following everybody else almost because we're forced to. That's what the younger attorneys want. That's what they sort of expect. Um, so every piece of space we're looking at, whether it's in New York or around the world, is, is by definition smaller than it was before, even though we have more people in it. Um, I, think it's a, I think we're just following what the industry and uh, others are doing. So we'll, we'll uh, go there. In terms of what these guys want to buy and, and why, you know, it's still location. I mean, uh, from my perspective, we still look at where, how we're going to get people there quickly, and what are our clients going to think when they enter the front door, and are they going to be I in mean, a neighborhood? Well, that when they we feel talk about with. you know this neighborhood, which I I can't call it the garment center anymore because it really isn't. 
uh, it's a part of Midtown South. You, as I said prior to the show, you have a great situation. You have the you have the Port Authority on one side. Right. You have Penn Station on the other side. You're not far from Grand Central. You have all of these nice situations. One of the negatives, which hopefully you'll fix up in your building, and is that it doesn't really have, you know, it's live work dying, but the neighborhood is live. Mm. Okay, look at all the buildings that Glenwood Management have put in on properties between 7th and 8th Avenue, uh, you know, 8th and 9th Avenue that people mm-hmm. never thought of. Mm-hmm. Now hotels, you know, uh, the former hat company is called the Refinery now. Yeah. You know, all of the properties over there. Now you have a dream hotel at the uh, former FIT. So the, the neighborhood is over there. And as, as we were saying before, Times Square is moving south. Times Square is definitely moving and, south. And one of the things I think that's, that's a big contributor to that is the one thing the area never really had was capital. Right. And so we had a lot of these old buildings, and we had a lot of buildings that people didn't spend a lot of money on. And when you, when you had garment tenants, people tended to say... You mean the shag carpet? Uh, lots of shag carpets. <laughs> lots of shag. Mm-hmm. But people never spent any money on these buildings. They never upgraded the electrical systems, the HVA system. They never renovated a lobby. So you had all these buildings. If, if you were walking along Broadway right now, Every single building has a scaffolding in front of it. Yeah. Every single landlord is changing a lobby, a facade, because you need the capital. Because when you talk about what tenants want, and Chris started talking a little bit about, you know, he says, I look at, I look at what our needs are. You have to have capital to match up with the tenants' needs. And I think the one thing that this area is really seeing is a lot of capital. You're seeing a lot of workers you know, really I, I, reinventing a lot you of You know, buildings. I agree with that, but I don't, you know what's interesting to me? You're not seeing foreign capital, right? But they still, every, when a foreign investor comes in by and large, 42nd Street is still as far, quote, south. And so I take your point about, you know, downtown not being anything but a hop, skip, and a jump away, mm-hmm. but you can't get them to look at those you locations. Know, so. when, in- you know, when you look at a situation, and I remember, because I've had private equity firms on the show, when you took, I think that the major situation was that when the Canadians bought the, the Tishman Spire building in Long Island City, mm-hmm. they never would have thought of Long Island City. Right. Now, I, it, but if you look at it in this way, Bank of China bought Seven Bryant Park. Right in the area. Seven yeah. Bryant Park is a right. block away. Yes, it's a block is. away. So, so yes, now yes. your comment about block. okay, yeah. <laughs> very important block. It, oh. It's 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 one block away, <laughs> and Bryant Park. And what's happening? Yeah. I mean, Bryant Park was Needle Park. Yes. And yeah. and the yeah. city has has truly yeah. changed yeah. over yeah. there. Mm-hmm. You know, and we'll look at all what's happening in the Bryant Park area. But sure. the, the neighborhood is increasing. Yes. Okay. There are many bids. You know the fashion bid, which is one over there. Mm-hmm. Over there. Yep. And then there's the Bryan Park bid, but the evolution of Sixth Avenue. Mm-hmm. If you look at it today, with you know with Seven Bryan Park and the, and the situation, you're going to have a Whole Foods there. There's going to be other. Right. I mean, Times Square is packed. Well, the retail's changing, right? That's the other thing that's happening. Yeah. We have a great opportunity in our building to change the retail, right? And instead of the old souvenir shops and. Um, you know, lower end. Well, you're going to get rid of the souvenirs? Well, we oh, don't have any, fortunately. You know, it was delivered vacant to us. <laughs> That's a positive. <laughs> so we have yeah, the, the New York Wait, The 1407 Club is no longer there. It's not there. I know you were a, a big patron. I, I was yeah. a patron. Yeah. 1407 Club was a place where all the hard money finance companies would meet downstairs and they would go and say, oh, we can get this guy for cheap. We're going to charge him 18%. <laughs> no, literally. Uh, and, and one time, you know, Harry Hemsley had a building. They, they were these private clubs on top of the buildings, not the core club or anything like that. But if you talk about there, there is a, a venue, a, a party club on a beautiful upstairs on, on the roof of 40, 40th and 7th Avenue. There's a Abigail Kirsch is running it. Yep, yep, there's a club up there. Right, there's a club up there, and it's very rustic because you walk in through the side entrance, the freight entrance, Mm -hmm. to go up there. Mm -hmm. But Skylark, is that the one? Skylark, yeah, Yeah, sure. So here's a question for all of you, because if you remember at one time when you would walk down Fifth Avenue, Fifth Avenue, you had building entrances on Fifth Avenue. Today, you don't have building entrances truly on Fifth Avenue. Madison Avenue, too. And the same thing on Madison Madison Avenue. Madison Avenue, same thing. Okay, but definitely on Fifth Avenue. Mm. Do you see, 
I mean, because you have an entire square block. At 14 almost, months, almost, almost yeah. an yeah. entire square block. Do you see possibly repositioning the entranceway of your building mm -hmm. to a side that you can get higher rents on the retail? I don't. I think I think at this point in time, it's important for a building of that size, a 1.1 million square foot building. We have a Broadway entrance. We have a 7th Avenue entrance. What we are looking at is doing a 39th Street entrance through the loading dock also to give us even more flexibility for tenants and potentially separate lobbies, that type of thing. But I think it's important to still have the Broadway entrance. I mean, we still we have a, a lot of people coming into that building and having a prominent lobby on Broadway. We think oh, at one so, time, and you, you remember with your properties, mm -hmm. in these buildings, they had... Hundreds and hundreds of tenants. We have 268 right now. Is that right? 260-ish. <laughs> yeah. At least yeah. Yeah. pretty yeah. around there yeah. right now. Well, wait a second. Yeah. I, I realize the statistician is yeah. here. Do, so how many do you think you'll have in the future? Ooh. No, I mean, it'll, it'll, over time, it'll change. It'll, it'll definitely change. It'll be less than 50. Yeah. You think less than 50. And what, over will, time. what will the makeup of the tenants from a former area that you had manufacturers, Sales offices, other things, maybe professionals. You had your accountants and your lawyers and some other people. What do you see? How much of it will be Tammy? And would you explain uh, to my audience what Tammy hmm. means? Tammy. Tammy's the, Tammy's the Tammy's amalgamate. The, it's like, Tammy, so, she it's like, be, there's, there's no, would, it's like would, Soho. There's no, there's no, it, it means <laughs> something, right? So it, it's technology, media, advertising, um, and, and internet. And internet. Okay. Um, so Hi. it's a real big combination. It, it's a hodgepodge. But what it really is and, and why they've been combined together is because the way they operate. And the way they operate is it tends to be younger people. It tends to be people who do benching. It tends to be do people who Do they allow up. you in since you're... No, I'm, I'm pa I'm, <laughs> I am way past uh, the, the Tammy world. I've, I've, I've out-aged out the Tammy world. Um, but they're grouped together because they want similar things. Um, and that's the way they operate, is, is they really like this collaboration. They work kind of off hours. They don't, it's not nine, five and taking trains. It's, they all bike, a lot of them. Even though they're subways, a lot of them like taking bicycles. And city bikes have become very, very popular. Uh, parks have become very, very popular. They like going outdoors. They like, you know, their, they, they all eat. Well, see, what happens is in the old days, it's funny, in the old days, when you wanted to have lunch, Right, and you were, and your people in your office, you know, five people would go out, and you'd all have to negotiate where you'd go, right? And, and then you'd all pick a place, and you all go to one place. Now you have all these food vendors that are that are commingling together. If you go on Broadway right now, they have a food they have a food distribution. This has happened when they made the plaza, so all five of us can go, and each of us can eat something different, and then eat together. I, I think that the example the, there was a vacant space across the street from. Your building, two thirty. Okay, two thirty. Mm -hmm. And my friend Shelley Fireman had looked at it for a restaurant, and I walked into it. it it's like it's a. It's called the market. There are about thirty-five different it's places. Yeah. Yeah. It's unbelievable. People Great like job. that. It's, it's unbelievable. So, so here's here's a question. You know, we're talking about different components and everything. The shared office, the WeWorks, which are tenants of yours, mm -hmm. which are, how do you see? Okay, you know when when the economy is great. Things are fine. We remember Regis, but as people say to me, don't you can't put Regis in the same category as we work. I understand, <laughs> Mr. So, Newman. That's okay. what that's what the we work people say. Yeah. That's what. <laughs> that's, 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 but what do you see, okay, for, for buildings that you own, okay, mm -hmm. and you have them as tenants? I'm not talking we works. I'm talking we works and that entire idea of the shared office, and you as a. As an attorney, what, how do you look at all the, this co-sharing? I look at it as trouble. <laughs> it's tough. You know, I mean, I, uh, I think when the economy's hot as it is, it's it's pretty easy to sort of look past the risk that might be um, tied to that kind of a arrangement. As it turns in the other direction, we'll see if there's really credit there to support what needs to go on. I mean, the interesting thing is that they're really part of a continuum. Uh, which is that, you know, these young kids, they start in, in these shared office yeah. circumstances, but some of them succeed, or a lot of them succeed, and hopefully a lot of them succeed. And they start growing, and then they want a next size space up. And, you know, oftentimes what we, we buy is buildings where they're in that next size up. So we love floor plates of five, seven, eight, nine thousand 9,000 square foot, where, where you can get single floor identity with young, growing tenants. Uh, we were lucky because all the tenants we got actually were young, growing, and profitable. So, because we actually are pretty rigorous on our on our credit standards. But the question is, is that engine at the bottom? Does it go away? 
yeah. or or is it part of this overall continuum that's a pretty massive move in terms of our entire economy? I mean, our, our entire economy is going away from manufacturing to this whole sector. So it's it's it it it's you have to look at it maybe in that regard. Is is it part of the continuum? Therefore, does it have its place? Now, it could be too big. Sure. It could be too big, but does it have its place right. in the continuum? You know, and we do a lot of heavy repositioning of buildings around the country, and when we do them, sometimes it makes sense to put uh, a tenant like that in there to create some vibe right off the bat. And maybe they're successful, maybe they're not, but, but at least it gets the young people in the building. And when you're trying to change an image of a building, sometimes we think that's helpful. I mean, would I do it as a, you know, the sole tenant in a, in a building for a few hundred thousand feet? No. But if you're going to do 30 or 40,000 square feet in a million square foot building, I think that's okay. See, I heard uh, Newman speak, uh, and somebody wanted me to moderate. It would have been better. It was Billy Rudin's on him. You know, so it really is biased because mm -hmm. the part, he's an investor in the thing. And somebody got up and he says, I love WeWorks. I've been a tenant. But now I have 18 people. And I really, I need more space. And Newman gets up and says, you don't understand. You have a much better deal with me. He says, but I, I'm paying you per desk. I'm paying right. you know, over there. And he says, but you have, we live now. He didn't say that, but that's the next yeah, idea. Yeah. That we live over there, and then you can, you know, the, there are the ping pong tables and the artisanal coffee. It's fine. When, when the world is great, because I still remember the co-sharing in 2001. I was doing some consulting for Deloitte & Touche, and there was a company called TechSpace, mm -hmm. which is still around. It's still around. And TechSpace... When the recession hit, the 2001 recession hit, he couldn't get tenants. And my comment to him was tech space for nonprofits because nonprofits really don't grow, which is, which is an idea because nonprofits have been priced out of the market. They don't, have, they don't have a space. I mean, there were a number of nonprofits that were in Times Square South, as you would call it today, or Midtown South. And, you know, uh, Jeff Garau is the king of the nonprofit building where he'd give special rents on the 8th Avenue, 40th, and so on. But, you know, you, the WeWorks is an idea. But, you know, the, the market is evolution and is there. But, we, you know, we have to look at, as, and I wasn't using the live work, an operation, mm -hmm. but you do have now in this metamorphosis of the Farm Garment Center, you have people living there because there are apartment right. houses. Yes. Yep. You have um, hotels yeah. over there. Yeah. You happen to have, and it's hard to believe, perhaps one of the highest hotel occupancy in the city of New York, mm. based on the numbers. Take 39th Street and 40th Street between 8th and 9th. They have all those hotels. Sure. And what's happening in the Farm Garment District? You go 36, 37, 38th, and 39th Street, you have an average of three hotels each and every block. Hmm. Uh, on these four, uh, some of them are conversions, and some of them are any parking lot, which is there are no more parking lots. Right. Okay, that's <laughs> right. the, the other right. situation over there. So, how much money do you think you're going to spend to improve the property? We have about a $30 million renovation budget. So, that's retail storefronts. Uh, lobby, elevator cabs, common areas. I mean, no money's been spent in that building in over 30 years, and it's 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 very except for the windows. A couple of years ago, one of they my the windows, windows. They did the windows. They did oh. the windows. They had great windows. One of my friends, it, because it was a certain type of windows, and the windows are really good. But you you need it. Do you see um, more open space type of tenants? I mean, I think we're going to have most of our tenants are going to be open space in the building. Uh, I think they're going to be open landscape, bench seating, uh, some fun areas for people to, you know, get together. But I think it's all going to be And telephone landscape. booths, right? Yeah, the little <laughs> telephone, little <laughs> telephone rooms. And little for telephone that, for that rooms. private call. You know, I, I think the opposite side on, on the WeWork thing. Um, I think that what they are very good at is they're very opportunistic real estate wise. Mm -hmm. They are the mm -hmm. first to go into an area. They, yep. They're very smart. They don't go into the area when it's at its height or it's at its peak and buy top of the so market. So they're, they're looking and they're opportunistic. They are very opportunistic. They are, they are out in Brooklyn before other people in Brooklyn. They are, this year, they did the largest deal in the Times Square South area. Right. Uh, they are, they're not the largest tenant, but they did the largest deal this year. So I think, you know, this is a tough topic to do 30 minutes, but I think we've really accomplished something. I think we've discussed the market, and I'd like to thank uh, Peter, Michael, Mark, Chris, and I'll see you next week. Or you can watch it on the Internet, Facebook, and all the others.